this second generation of the Mazda CX-9 is a little bit of a love-hate relationship because this is its seventh year. Seventh year of production and there's a few things that have gone a little long in the tooth. You know, I love Mazda and I love its third row offering, the CX-9. However, in this car vid, I'm gonna cover all the things that have really just bothered me about the CX-9 and make it time to go. So let's jump in. What's up everybody, I'm Jonathan Soul Sells on the way to the boulevard at Mitchell Mazda in Enterprise, Alabama. And I'm gonna battle through this congestion this morning as it was 40 degrees this morning, which is pretty cool for a South Alabama boy. So 40 degrees, a little bit of congestion, and we're talking about something else that I, I hope would clear up, and that's the CX-9. Now don't get me wrong, I love the CX-9. It's Mazda through and through, but there's a few features that I think need some updating and need some changing, and uh, we need to have this conversation before the CX-90 comes, and this is kind of why the CX-9 is going bye-bye. The first thing to mention is this armrest right here. So, you know, I've, I've talked about it before, getting in and out, and just over time, this dual door armrest is not holding up the way that I would want. Now, I, I haven't really seen any that have busted or broken, but they get pretty weak, especially in the center. I know that the CX-60 has the same split armrest, which I'm good with if it's light, and of course that means the CX-70, CX-90 will have that too. And I'm good with that as long as it's the reinforced, firm, stiff uh, armrest that we see, or console lid that we see on the CX-50. I don't think we're gonna have any problems with that, but this one just seems a little bit flimsy. And I know that through the years, uh, some people have not liked this enough, and some people have maybe walked away from the CX-9 because of this. Now, I appreciate the update in 2021 with the new 10.25 inch infotainment system. However, when they did that, they took away some of the, uh, well, the this old cigarette lighter DC charger. There's only one on the passenger side, and by the time you reach over there to plug in something or unplug something, it, it's really inconvenient and you shouldn't do it while you're driving, uh, unless you have a passenger there, of course. So in this console, there's two USB chargers or two USB ports. Either one you can use for CarPlay or Android Auto, but they're only 1.1 version USB. So not the high speed charging, not the 2.1 amps that we see in the rear. So I hope that Mazda updates these with stronger USBs or give us another DC charger that's in the that's that's more convenient for the driver. I know that's kind of old tech moving out. No uh, no real everybody does everything with USB these days. So give us USB C and a 2.1 high speed charger more convenient and yeah i like the wireless charger too but it's a little inconvenient how the uh, console is shaped and that angle to get it lined up just right and to charge so there can be some work done for that too sticking with the driver's perspective and i know this is not just uh, a feature or a limited feature on the cx9 but at 40 degrees this morning, I like a little heated steering wheel, heated seats. Of course, the heated steering wheel is only like in the, the two to four position and the uh, 11 to seven. Give us a heated steering wheel all the way around Mazda on the new large architecture. You're talking about premium, a full heated steering wheel is the way to premium. Now the big news of course in this second generation was going away from the Ford engine of the six cylinder and going into a Mazda Skyactiv 2.5 liter uh, base, but also adding the turbo to the six CX-9 standard on every trim. And I'm very impressed with that engine and the turbo. However, in this class of SUV, we need a little bit more power and we need a six cylinder to be competitive now. But also, as I'm running right now, I'm getting 23.3 miles per gallon. I think the new powertrains are moving up. 
with more power from a six speed or the PHEV, the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, whatever the case may be, a little extra motor, but also that eight speed transmission is gonna help get into that lower RPMs, higher speeds, so that we can get better fuel economy. So sometimes I feel a little underpowered when you load up uh, six or seven people, whatever the case may be, and maybe a little bit of cargo. So I think that that extra power, uh, better transmission or more gears will get better fuel economy, better performance, and feel better on the road when you got folks in there. <laughs> Talking about other passengers, I'm so excited about the new crossover being an eight passenger. Eight passengers available on the CX-90. That changes the game for people looking at this size, especially when this is our largest uh, crossover SUV. We don't have another full size, so eight passengers is the way to go. Speaking of the CX-9 though, I'm very thankful that they incorporated a captain's chair or a center console uh, pass-through in 2020. Uh, I think they were late to the game in that, but I am glad that they're gonna continue with that luxury captain's chairs, and if it's an eight passenger vehicle, we know it's gonna be a little bit wider, so you will have a little more room in that, that uh, pass through, and it will be a little more com comfortable to walk from the second row to the third row. So good job upgrading Mazda, and it's something that the CX-9 was lacking. Still speaking of the rear passengers, in South Alabama, this weather is not typical. You hop in that third row seat, because you have to, right? There's other passengers that trump you in position of seating, older siblings or whatever the case may be. You hop in there in the middle of July or August, it's 150 to 200 degrees with the greenhouse effect, and all you have are these vents coming out the back of the console to cool you down, it ain't gonna happen. You're gonna wish that you had a window that would roll down so you can hang your head out and cool off, but it's not gonna happen. So thankfully, we know that on the CX-90, I hope, because I haven't really seen up top, but I figured it would have air vents up top all the way for all three rows. That's expected in a third row SUV nowadays to have air vents up top. And I know, I know that parents that have been buying this vehicle or shopping this vehicle have walked away from the CX-9 because it didn't have those air vents. The last thing on this list comes from a family man and that's the rear cargo with the third row seat up. Now I know that this is one of the longest at 199 inches, the longest midsize SUVs in the segment right now. Uh, however, I, I love Kodo design, but that really doesn't do much for the rear cargo behind the third row because of how that rear slant down glass is. When you have the third row up, it really is just a little bit behind the seat that you can uh, factor in for cargo. And if you are using all three rows, you are unable to fit a stroller back there, and that's very important. I remember the days when we had to have a stroller or when we were traveling with a stroller and luggage, and so it's important that there's room back there. That may be, in fact, why the CX-90, although we haven't got the official specs on length, but that may be why the CX-90 has more of a flat rear design, sort of like a wagon, because it's compensating to give us more cargo room. And I hope that's the case, Mazda, because passenger comfort and cargo room is what's necessary for a third row crossover SUV for family trips and also an enjoyable ride for everybody. I think that wraps up all the bashing that I can do on the CX-9 right now. Again, just a, a reminder or caveat, I love this vehicle, I love Mazda and everything about it. There's just these features that have really bothered me through the years that uh, I think have been hurting our sales and hurting the growth of Mazda and the passion of Mazda that could be uh, experienced by others because of some of these features that limit the marketability or limit the uh, owners. So I know Mazda's addressing some of these. I hope they all come together in the CX-90. We will have a little bit more room. We will have a little bit more cargo room, better performance I know with those powertrains. So looking forward to the global premiere in January. If you have any questions or comments on the CX-9 or any other Mazda, you can drop them down below or text me directly at 334-718-0504. I'm gonna continue my way on the boulevard to Mitchell Mazda and I hope to see you there really soon.